Fallout New Vegas is a game that facilitates a wide variety of different player styles and choices, allowing the player to complete the entire game without killing a single person, or complete the game with the conscience of knowing you've killed everyone in the state of Nevada. There's a reason why people really like Fallout New Vegas, and it's mainly due to how every playthrough can feel like a unique experience and built within that experience is the worst kept secret in the entire Fallout franchise, that being this little menu in the Fallout New Vegas Pip-Boy for the New Vegas challenges. New Vegas has a total of 189 challenges in this menu that are unlockable, each rewarding a bundle of XP to the player, sometimes accompanied with a perk of some sort. These challenges can be fairly easy, like losing 5 games of Caravan, finding each of the corresponding vaults, or even playing 10 games of roulette. But there exists a few small challenges in this game that are downright ridiculous. Some challenges that go beyond the point of being obtainable during the average normal playthrough. So you know what that means. Today, we're exploring the most obnoxious challenges in Fallout New Vegas. So let's get one thing clear before we start, I'm mostly basing this list off of the average playthrough that a person will experience with New Vegas. So before you leave me a comment telling me that you finished all these challenges 20 times, please keep in mind that the average wasteland scrub probably never knew there was a cannibal perk in this game to begin with. Which brings us to our first challenge. Now, this challenge doesn't seem so bad at first before you really truly realise how much the game is asking of you. The Devourer of Nations challenge is the second tier challenge for the cannibal perk, a perk which lets you eat the corpses of your enemies to regain health. The challenge itself requires the player to complete the challenge Dine and Dash, which asks you to devour a total of 25 corpses. A tall task to be sure, but this grants the Dine and Dash perk, which lets you take some of this food on the go, which is a very neat little perk for any hardcore cannibal run. So how many more corpses is needed for the second tier of this challenge? Maybe 25? Maybe 50? 100? Try 200. That's right, to complete this challenge and receive the whopping 100 bonus XP it provides, you have to eat a total of 225 corpses, 25 from Dine and Dash, and 200 from Devour of Nations. Which means you have to watch the same 9 second animation for a total of 33 minutes and 45 seconds. Doesn't seem like a lot, but this gets very, very repetitive very, very fast. When I polled you guys about this, a majority of you claimed to basically never use the cannibal perk, with roughly a quarter of you using it sparingly. Which begs the question, why is this challenge so stacked against you? I totally understand expecting the player to use cannibal here and there, maybe for a specific quest or unique dialogue, but you truly can't expect people to really sit and eat 225 corpses, can you? It took me 1 hour and 20 minutes to accomplish this task on stream, murdering the entirety of the Strip, Freeside, Good Springs, North Vegas, and even Novak. The challenge itself wasn't hard per se, it was just very, very, very repetitive. Which brings us on to our next challenge. I Dismember You is probably the most plausible challenge you'll see in this video, with the challenge itself requiring you to dismember a total of 1,000 limbs. It's totally reasonable that a 1 hour plus playthrough will most likely hit this challenge, but what makes this challenge a bit of a pain is that you can't dismember these limbs after death, which means that you must dismember a limb on kill or else it doesn't count. Which basically means that any build outside of an explosive build is going to struggle. Now before you mention the bloody mess perk, bloody mess in itself only procs every so often, so not every kill will actually cause this effect, and even then when you get the bloody mess explosion, it sometimes doesn't even add to the dismember tally. It's a weird perk, and it doesn't really work well with this challenge. I Dismember You is a fairly rough challenge overall, and whilst using the grenade launcher and killing almost every enemy on sight, wiping out almost every civilization, and killing almost every creature, this challenge took me a total of 2 hours and 25 minutes, with the final limb to be dismembered being that of Doc Mitchell's head. Alright, I'm gonna end it with the boy, you know who it is. I'm gonna end it with our man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Doc. We'll miss you! Alright! Dismembered 1000 limbs, holy...
I did not enjoy doing this challenge as towards the end, after around 700 limbs, I started to struggle to find enemies that would respawn, and even had to resort to wiping out Caesar's camp and the dam. This next challenge is one that I personally was shocked to discover that no one really completes. See, No When to Foldem is tied to the in-game card game of Caravan, a game in which the player and their opponent must take turns placing individual cards along three separate running decks that compete against each other. Each deck must add up to between 21 to 26, and the player that has two of the three decks... What I'm trying to say is that Caravan is a game that apparently around 80% of you guys completely missed or just refused to play. This isn't exactly new knowledge, as I'm constantly asked in my all achievement runs how I can even understand the game or bear to play it. Now the fact that 80% of the players miss Caravan completely isn't exactly so bad in itself, that just means that 20% of the average New Vegas player base is capable of completing No When to Fold Them, right? Well, that's when you realise that this challenge requires you to beat an opponent in a total of 30 games of Caravan, a feat that only 1.7% of Steam players have accomplished. Which means getting banned from every casino in Vegas, picking 50 pockets, or completing the game as a dirty legionnaire is more common than completing this challenge. This challenge only took me 27 minutes to accomplish, but like I said, this is mostly down to the fact that I run all achievements, and 30 caravan wins is an achievement in this game. Talking about achievements, let's move on to a challenge that also has an achievement tied to it. This is the challenge of Desert Survivalist, where you, the player, must heal a total of 10,000 damage with food. Now personally, this was the last achievement I had to obtain when I played casually, I never really utilised both the survival and the food healing mechanic of this game. Even when playing hardcore, I just forgot about it really, with the only time I would eat being when the game would prompt me to, with the big red FOD letters. I'm sure this is probably the challenge a couple of you guys will disagree with me on, but I personally never really had a playthrough naturally long enough to sustain the 10,000 healing needed for this challenge. So how long did it take me to beat? Eh, not too long. Essentially for this challenge we can grab a bunch of food from various hotspots and take the Old World Gourmet perk at level 2 for a boost in 50% extra health regenerated from food. From here we can simply drown ourselves constantly as this will slowly lose us health points as we snack down on a wide variety of goods. This method took me about an hour to get the challenge. Here it is, 9,961, and then we add on top. Boom, 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 boom. Wait for it, boom, boom. And just like that, boys. However, when doing all achievement speedruns, we can actually speed this achievement up by a huge margin. By duplicating any source of food, Tori glitch by doing this. Now the game's gonna take 1,040 gecko steaks. Boom. Damaging ourselves in hardcore mode, entering the pit boy and spamming the devour button over and over again, allows us to trick the game into thinking we're healing beyond our health point max total, which basically means that every time we press one of the food types in our inventory, we get the full regeneration of HP that applies to the challenge, which actually breaks the game apart and lets us complete the challenge in under two minutes. Like that. Challenge complete. 100 XP. <laughs> Moving on with our list, we have our first damage challenge. Usually when people do playthroughs of Fallout New Vegas, they can get very creative, but for the most part, players usually stick to the general gun and laser playthrough that plagues the entire wasteland. However, this challenge in particular revolves around a specific type of build. And boy, are my arms tired, is set around dealing damage with your hands. 100,000 damage. Yeah. This is the highest damage challenge in the entire game, with the second highest being that of dealing a quarter of this. 25,000 damage with a rifle grip energy weapon. So yeah, why did they think this was a good idea? Why did Obsidian make the highest damage challenge in the game be correlated to the generally lowest damage build found? Who knows? But we have a task to complete, and we will complete it. We can grab the Embrace of the Mantis King unique from Mick and Ralph's, which has a surprisingly high crit multiplier. This weapon, when dealing crit damage, will simply multiply that damage by 3, which means all we need to do is be in stealth and smack some random civilian by the back of their head. You okay there, bro? 
resulting in around 550 damage per stealth kill, which actually isn't too bad. Meaning that if you do the math, we only need a total of 182 stealth kills to finish the challenge. So yeah, that's what I did. After around 56 minutes of being in constant stealth, we had reached our final kill, being that of Benny, and had finished the challenge. 100,000 fist damage complete. Now, a little side note here, there's an ammo bug glitch in Fallout New Vegas where you can apply any Gunrunner Arsenal ammo type to any weapon of choice. Well, a member of my community by the name of Chiefy had figured out that this damage also gets applied to non-ammo consuming weapons, like unarmed or melee weapons, meaning that you can actually use the Big Kid Mini Nuke on any melee weapon, which lets you do a total of nearly 5,000 damage per stealth kill. 5,000 damage! 5! thousand damage in one hit because like i said before this is multiplied by the crit chance of the mantis king you can get crazy with this glitch and deal upwards of 10k damage a punch but that's a topic for another day with this glitch in hand you can complete the 100k damage in 21 kills which took me a much faster time of only 10 minutes so yeah this challenge is weird but honestly not that bad moving on Now, let me ask you a question real quick. How common do you find super mutants within New Vegas? Pretty often, right? Wrong. Super mutants are only really seen in two major locations across the Nevada, that being Black Mountain and Jacobstown. There are a few safe havens here and there, like the few in Repcon under the ghouls and the two to three super mutants that spawn near the big one that is activated by Wild Wasteland. But even with the DLCs installed, there's a limited amount of preset spawns in New Vegas itself. I counted a total of 53, but I'm probably missing a lone wanderer here and there. We've killed 53. We cleared out Black Mountain, Jacobstown, the Rabbit Springs, Black Rock Cave, the three previously mentioned spawns near the big one, the solo wind brahmin cellar at the Brooks Tumbleweed Ranch. There he is. You want to buy wind brahmin? There he is! Wind Brahmin, you mean the tumbleweeds? Tumble... what? We need him for the challenge, I'm sorry. We have to kill him as part of the challenge. The Nightkin under the Repcon test site, mean son of a bitch in Westside, and even the randomly spawned Nightkin that attacks his Brahmin at midnight near Novak with a comically loud minigun. <gasps> you motherfucker! Again, I only counted 53. Which begs the question as to why there's a challenge called Super Mutant Massacre that requires the player to murder and kill 150 Super Mutants. That's right, nearly three times the actual preset spawn count. So how do you do it? Well, Super Mutants only really respawn at Black Mountain, so we must murder the few that do and wait three days for them to reset. And this gets very boring very fast. There's not much to say about this challenge. It took me 90 minutes of my life I'll never get back, so let's move on to possibly the worst challenge in the game, and the reason why I made this video in the first place. I mean, I don't think anyone has ever finished this challenge unintentionally. It's so bad, I can't even begin to explain how confusing it is. Let me introduce you to At A Loss For Words. So what makes this so obnoxious? What makes this so confusing? Well, this challenge requires you to fail, that's right, fail 100 speech checks. Doesn't sound like a lot, and I'm sure you're all wondering how bad this really could be. Well, it's not actually a hard challenge to finish if you go in with the mindset of finishing it, but its mere presence makes zero sense. For starter, you only get 75 XP for finishing this challenge, which equates on average to around four speech checks completed. So we're trading 100 failed speech checks for the equivalence of four past ones. Even then, on top of that, you have to intentionally not level up skills that are used in conversations. Stuff like speech, barter, repair, medicine, and so on. Now at first, it can be a struggle to find all 100 speech checks worth failing. However, roughly six months ago, me and some other community members actually routed a category that involved all challenges. And we found that by simply moving from quest to quest without completing them, would give the player a wide variety of available speech checks. Alongside this, stuff like asking for a discount in a bedroom would prompt a barter check, and even shooting the memorial would offer the player a chance to fail another. The challenge itself doesn't take too long to complete. Like I said, it's not the most difficult challenge, 
It just feels very out of place and counterproductive to a normal playthrough. The only playthrough that would benefit from this challenge is some low intelligence roleplay playthrough that would intentionally screw everything up. But still, the point stands that I believe personally this is the least completed challenge in New Vegas, as I really can't believe that players would unintentionally fail 100 speech checks in the game, when you don't really gain anything from doing so. I ended up utilizing the Old Well Blues DLC because they don't stop talking in that DLC, because it also has a bunch of speech checks you can fail at the start, which eventually, after 1 hour and 16 minutes, made me finish the challenge and get my amazing whopping 75 XP. So that's my list of the most obnoxious challenges in New Vegas. I personally enjoyed completing these, and I had a fun time repeating these same steps over and over again to finally overcome some of the most insane feats. I'm going to give a shout out to my Twitch community for helping me come up with this list and helping me power through the free streams it took to complete them all. I've been at Stjabo, and thank you guys so much for watching. As always, more videos to come, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.